talk about is we're going to go on a little trip through space, okay? And look at what happens to the body physiologically when you go into space. Well, first of all, on the launch pad right away, as you're blasting up, right, you're going to experience all these G-forces. And those G-forces are going to really kind of mess you up right off the bat. So once by the time you get up into orbit, up towards uh, the upper atmosphere, you're already going to start feeling sick at this point. Basically, uh, your inner ear, sensory uh, uh, changes occur, sight, balance, those kind of things are all going to become um, pretty messed up right away. Um, so once you get into space now, you're basically free falling, right? Going in orbit is a free fall towards the Earth. So as you're going around in free fall uh, and floating in microgravity, you have all these physiologic changes going on. There's really two main areas that we're concerned with with space flight, long duration space flight, which is the changes, the cardiovascular changes, the fluid shifts up into the upper body, and then the wasting of the musculoskeletal system. So the fluid goes to the upper body, your face gets a little puffy, you get these little bird legs kind of thing, um, you get a headache, stuffed up nose, and then over time if you stay in the space, you really start to lose muscle and bone really dramatically, really fast. So how do we counteract those kind of effects? So, now, um, you know, you can go up, you can see, spend some time on the space station. I like to take this trip a little further and look in the future what we're going to be doing. We're going to be going into deep space and then hopefully to the moon. Now, we met, I mentioned, or he mentioned that I do some strongman competitions. So my best deadlift, which is just picking up a weight, right, from the ground is about 600 pounds. But on the moon, because it's only one sixth Earth's gravity, that's going to feel real light, right? My body weight is 200 pounds, I'm going to feel like 32 pounds. So if I'm this guy right back here running to go pick up a rock, I could pick up that big boulder and carry it around like 1,200 pounds. It's 0.17 g or 17% of the Earth's gravity on the moon. Uh, when we go out and we go into what's called EVA, extravehicular activity, you actually get into a spacesuit and it takes you high up at altitude. It's like going up to altitude because you have to decrease the pressure inside the spacesuit so you can move around a little bit. Otherwise, it would be too stiff. And then coming out of that, you have to make sure you go through the process of denitrogenation so you don't get uh, what's called the bends. Um, then if we stay at the moon, we could go then thinking in long-term Mars. So looking at the comparison between Earth and Mars. Now, Mars is much smaller. It's 38% uh, of the size of the Earth. So it's 0.38 G. So once again, my max deadlift now, uh, 600 is down to 225. It's still pretty light. So it's not going to provide enough gravity really to sustain us for a long period of time if we don't do exercise. We absolutely have to do exercise both on the moon and on Mars. And a lot of it's going to be resistance training. This is some of the exercises they do on the space station. Uh, these two on the right are some resistance training devices that NASA's developed. Uh, others that we've developed, uh, the space cycle, which provides a little force going around, and what I, the, the Colbert treadmill. So there was this contest for Stephen Colbert, and they were going to name a space station, but they just decided, no, we'll just name the treadmill. <laughs> so they named the treadmill after it. Yeah. And then we have ways to simulate gravity, and one is these, uh, they call them uh, the vomit comet. So they go up in these big parabolic flights, and it gets you really sick. But you've got about like 30 seconds of free flow uh, of floating basically in microgravity on its way down. And we can test some exercise devices. One way we do this to simulate on the on land is what going into bed rest. So we put people in bed rest, six degree head down tilt bed rest, and that simulates the effects of being in microgravity. Um, some have been stayed in bed rest for long periods of time. In Russia, they did a, a one year bed rest. We can also simulate by putting in these cool contraptions. Here's an upper body ergometer because a lot of times in space and UVA, you use your upper body. So this is a way to test then uh, upper body performance. There's other ways, immobilization. We suspend rats and mice, right? And look at their hind legs to see how the changes in the muscle and bone occur over time, okay? Immobilization, we could cast a limb. I did that in my research to see the effects on, on muscle and bone. Um, in the future, what we're going to do, instead of taking off that big vertical rocket, right, uh, we have these newer um, uh, uh, airplanes that basically have rockets, so we're going to be able to get out there in space in a reasonably short amount of time. Um, yes, Bones, I know. We have a lot of problems down here on Earth, right? And overpopulation, the effects on the atmosphere. Um, He's hanging out with Dennis Rodman. I mean, it's going crazy, right? <laughs> so what are we going to do in the future? Well, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to basically look beyond. I'm not giving up on Earth, but in the future, we should really look towards 
mining minerals in space, maybe terraforming Mars here. It could take thousands of years, but if we set this in a motion, we could really do it and, and survive in the long term. Okay, thank you very much.